Speaker Bowers, thank you for being with us today. You're the Speaker of the Arizona House and a self-described conservative Republican. You campaigned for President Trump and with him during the 2020 election. Is it fair to say that you wanted Donald Trump to win a second term in office? Please. Yes, sir. Thank you. And is it your understanding that President Biden was the winner of the popular vote in Arizona in 2020? Yes, sir. Thank you. Pursuant to Section 5C8 of House Resolution 503, the chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Schiff, for questions. <clears throat> Speaker Bowers, thank you for being with us today. Um, before we begin with the questions that I had prepared for you, I wanted to ask you about a statement uh, that former President Trump issued, um, which I received just prior to the hearing. Uh, have you had a chance to review that statement? I, my counsel called from Arizona and read it to me. Yes, sir. Uh, in that statement, I won't read it in its entirety. Uh, former President Trump begins by calling you a rhino, uh, Republican in name only. He then references a conversation uh, in November 2020 in which he claims that you told him that the election was rigged and that he had won Arizona. Now, to quote uh, the former president, during the conversation, he told me the election was rigged and that I won Arizona, unquote. Did you have such a conversation with the president? I did have a conversation with the president. Um, that certainly isn't it, but there were parts of it that are true, but there are parts that are not, sir. And the part that I read you, uh, is that false? Anywhere, anyone, anytime has said that I said the election was rigged, that would not be true. And when uh, the, pro the former president in his statement today claimed that you told him that he won Arizona, is that also false? That is also false. Mr. Bowers, I understand that after the election, and I don't know whether this is the conversation the former president is referring to, but after the election, you received a phone call from President Trump and Rudy Giuliani in which they discussed the result of the presidential election in Arizona. Uh, if you would, tell us about that call uh, and whether the former president or Mr. Giuliani raised allegations of election fraud. Thank you. I had, uh, my wife and I had returned from uh, attending our church meetings. It was on a Sunday. And uh, we were still in the driveway. and. I had received a call from a colleague telling me that the White House was trying to get in touch with her and I, and that she said, please, if you get a call, let's try to take this together. Immediately, I saw that the White House on my Bluetooth was calling, and I took the call and was asked by the, I would presume, the operator at the White House if I would hold for the president, which I did, and he, Mr. Giuliani came on first and niceties, then Mr. Trump, President Trump, then President Trump came on, and we initiated a conversation. And during that conversation, uh, did um, you ask Mr. Giuliani for proof of these allegations of fraud that he was making? On multiple occasions, yes. Uh, and when you asked him uh, for evidence of this fraud, what did he say? He said that they did have proof, and I asked him, do you have names? For example, we have 200,000 illegal immigrants, some large number, uh, five or 6,000 dead people, etc. And I said, do you have their names? Yes. Will you give them to me? Yes. The president interrupted and said, give the man what he needs, Rudy. He said, I, I will. And that happened on at least two occasions, that interchange in the conversation. So Mr. Giuliani was claiming in the call that there were hundreds of thousands of undocumented people and thousands of dead people who had uh, purportedly voted in the election? Yes. Uh, and you asked him for evidence of that? I did. Uh, and did he ever receive, did you ever receive from him that evidence uh, either during the call, after the call, or to this day? Never. Um, what was the ask during this call? 
Uh, he was making these allegations of fraud, but he had something or a couple things uh, that they wanted you to do. What were those? The ones I remember were first the, that we would hold, that I would allow an official committee at, at the Capitol so that they could hear this evidence and that we could take action thereafter. Um, and I refused. I said, up to that time, the, the circus, I called it a circus, had been brewing with uh, lots of demonstrations, both at the counting center, at the Capitol, and other places. And I didn't want to have that in the House. I, I did not feel that the evidence, granted in its absence, merited a hearing, and I didn't want to be used as a pawn. Uh, if there was some other need that the, uh, that the committee hearing would fulfill. Um, so that was the first ask, that we ha hold an official committee hearing. And what was his second ask? I, I said, to what end? To what end the hearing? He said, well, we have heard by an official high up in the Republican uh, legislature that there is a legal theory or a legal ability in Arizona that you can remove the um, the electors of President Biden and replace them. And we would, we would like to have the legitimate opportunity through the committee to come to that end and, and remove that. And I said, that's, that's, something I've, that's totally new to me. I've never heard of any such thing. And he pressed that point. And I said, look, you are asking me to do something that is counter to my oath when I swore to the Constitution to uphold it, and I also swore to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Arizona, and this is totally foreign as a, an idea or a theory to me, and I would never do anything of such magnitude without deep consultation with qualified attorneys, and I said, I've got some good attorneys, and I'm gonna give you their names. Uh, but you're asking me to do something against my oath, and I will not break my oath. And I think that was up to that point. Um, during the conversation, uh, and you heard, I think, uh, when we played um, a snippet of Mr. Giuliani calling other state legislators and saying that he was calling as essentially a fellow Republican, did he make a similar appeal to you or bring up the fact that you shared a, a similar party? Whether it was in that call or in a later meeting, I, he did bring that up more than once. And how, how would he bring that up? He would say, aren't we all Republicans here? I, I, I would think we would get a better reception. I mean, I would think you would listen a little more open to my suggestions, that we're all Republicans. Um, and this, uh, this evidence that you asked him for that would justify this extraordinary step, I think you, you said they never produced. Why did you feel, either in the absence of that evidence, um, or with it, what they were asking you to do would violate your oath to the Constitution? First of all, when the people, and in Arizona, I believe it was some 40 plus years earlier, the legislature had established the manner of electing our officials, or the electors for the presidential race. Once it was given to the people, as in Bush v. Gore, illustrated by the Supreme Court, it becomes a fundamental right of the people. So as far as I was concerned, for someone to ask me in the, I would call it a paucity, there was no, no evidence being presented of any strength. Evidence can be hearsay evidence, it's still evidence, but it's still hearsay. But strong judicial quality evidence, anything that would say to me, you have a doubt deny your oath, I will not do that. And on more than, on more than one occasion throughout all this, that has been brought up, and it is a tenet of my faith that the Constitution is divinely inspired of my most basic foundational beliefs. 
And so for me to do that because somebody just asked me to is foreign to my very being. I, I, I will not do it. During that uh, conversation, Speaker Bowers, um, did you ask him if what he was proposing had ever been done before? I did. And what did he say? He said, well, I'm not familiar with Arizona law or any other laws, but I, um, I, don't, I don't think so. And that also was brought up in other conversations, both with him and with John Eastman and others. Speaker Bowers, I understand that a week after that call, Mr. Giuliani appeared with others associated with President Trump's effort to overturn the result of the election at a purported legislative hearing in a hotel ballroom in Phoenix. Was this an official hearing of the state legislature? It was not. Uh, and, and why was it not a real or official hearing of the legislature? A legislator can hold a group meeting. You can call it a hearing. Um, but when they asked me to have an official hearing. We establish it by protocols, public notice, etc. It's typically held at the Capitol, but it doesn't need to be. We can authorize a hearing off campus. And in this case, I had been asked on several occasions to allow a hearing. I had denied it, but said, you're free to hold a meeting, any meeting you want, to the person who asked and which he ultimately did. I think he was a little frustrated, but he ultimately did. Now this uh, this uh, meeting was the same day, I believe, that the governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey, certified Biden as the winner of the presidential election in Arizona. Uh, did you meet with Mr. Giuliani and his associates while they were in Phoenix uh, sometime after that purported legislative hearing at the hotel? Yes, I did, sir. And at that meeting, uh, did Mr. Giuliani raise any specific allegations of election fraud again? Uh, his initial comments were, again, the litany of groups of illegal individuals or people deceased, etc. And he had brought that up. And I wasn't alone in that meeting. There were others. And other members of the Senate uh, aggressively questioned him. And then I proceeded to question him on the proof that he was going to bring me, etc. But he did bring those up, yes. And these other legislatures, uh, legislators were also Republican members of the Senate? They were, yes, sir. Uh, and did they also press him for proof of these allegations? Uh, they pressed him very strongly, two of them especially, very strongly. Uh, and at some point, uh, did Mr. Giuliani ask one of the other attorneys uh, on his team to help him out with the evidence? He did. He asked Jenna Ellis, who was sitting to his right, uh, one thing was that it was more to the point of was there sufficient evidence or action that we could justify the recalling of the electors. But at that part of the conversation, I know he, he referred to someone else. But he did ask, do we have the proof to Jenna, Miss Ellis? And she said, yes. And I said, I want the names. Do you have the names? Yes. Do you have? how they voted. We have all the information. I said, can you get to me that information? Did you bring it with you? She, she said, no. Both Mr. Giuliani asked her and I asked generally if they had brought it with them. She said, no, it's not with me, but we can get it to you. And I said, then you didn't bring me the evidence, which was repeated in different iterations for some period of time. At some point, did uh, one of them uh, make a comment that uh, they didn't have evidence, but they had a lot of theories? That was Mr. Giuliani. And, and what exactly did he say and how did that come up? My recollection, he said, we've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. And I don't know if that was a gaffe or maybe he, he didn't think through what he said, but both myself and others in my group, the three in my group and my, my counsel, both remembered that specifically and afterwards we kind of laughed about it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.